Hi, it's Mike Rogers Show. Today, Happy New Year. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Tom Wilcox. He's a music curator, manager, producer, and musician. And dare I say, this gentleman is responsible for, well, partially responsible for the post-death Bowie boom that has enthralled audiences the world over, as well as many other projects. Won't you welcome with me, Mr. Tom Wilcox? Yay! Great to see you, Mike. Great to see you, Tom. It, before this interview, I did some research on who you are. And I'm sorry I never did that before because I'm kind of lazy, but I was just blown away. So can you give us a, a quick just a self-introduction of yourself? Tell us who you are, what you do. Yeah, thank you. Well, I've been involved in music for 30 years. I, like everyone else, I started off in bands like you did, Mike. Uh, as a teenager, and uh, I played in a band called Maniac Squat for five years. Um, we had a hit, a uh, small hit, Top 100 record in 1995. Um, and since then, really, I've been producing, managing, curating, uh, putting music shows together, uh, finding people I haven't played for years and, and uh, helping to revive their careers and, 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 and you know, bring interesting shows around the world. Yeah, that's that's what I'm amazed about. I I was actually very confused. Like, how do I introduce this? This guy does everything. So wait a minute. So let let's let's start from the beginning. So you played in Manic Squat, Maniac, Maniac, Squat. Maniac, Maniac Squat in 1995. What was the name of the hit song you had? Uh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say it, Mike. But um, the first oh. word, the first word begins with F, and the and the second word is off. <laughs> I think one of one of my tips for people would be in starting your career is um, uh, is write a song that can be played on the radio. Yes, you know it will help. Yes, because that that didn't get much radio play, surprisingly. Oh, so you know that I was in a band. Who told you that? Uh, I remember you saying that to Clem. Oh yeah, oh that's right. Yeah he he knew. Well, I thought he knew. Maybe he knew. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was a that was a long time ago. Our song was banned on all sorts of radio stations and stuff for the kind of the same thing. So um, the song got banned, and then what happened? That that just the band just broke up, or what? Uh, we we hung around for a bit afterwards and did another single, and then that that was it, really. I mean, we we were together for five years, but mm -hmm. we just we weren't quite quite good enough, really. Didn't have the the depth or the nuance to make a career out of it or the talent really. So uh, we've all gone on and done other things. I mean, we, we get together every year or two uh, and, and play a gig for old time's sake. Um, yeah. And we've got, now we've got uh, Kevin Armstrong and Matt Hector from Iggy Pop's band playing with us in the band. It's, it's, imp it's improved it a bit. So uh, I wish, I wish we'd have known them 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, I have a list here that I've written down the names of people who, we are kind of mutual friends with, and I was really surprised. And um, well, first off, um, how did you, how, how did you, I don't even know how to express this. How, how did you become a music curator, a producer a, and a musician and the chair of the Workplace Foundation and a trustee of Whitechapel Gallery Buildings Trust and the Rebecca Swift Foundation. And you're also the founder of Counterculture. When do you sleep, Tom? <laughs> uh, I, I do get some sleep. I, I mean, it's, it's all culture, Mike, isn't it? You know, and um, th there's one thing, all, all the art school bands that you and I like, you know, the, the Roxy Musics and the, the yeah. Velvet Underground. All, all this, you know, that, that whole tradition of, of music in the last... 50 or so years is it's been about uh music not being confined uh, to music itself you know music music's part of general culture it's connected to visual arts connected to other things so all of these things i do are cultural they're all, they're all connected they're all about managing things better doing things better uh, giving people things that they want to see that are artistically interesting so I, I think although it might seem like lots of incoherent parts to my career for me they're, they're all part of the same thing so you I gather that you are kind of an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, Counterculture is a management consultancy that works with, you know, art galleries, individual musicians, opera companies, orchestras, theatres. 
Uh, and I set that up about 13 years ago. Um, uh-huh. And it's the largest business of its type in the UK now. So that's that's my main uh, day-to-day activity. Um, so, oh. so, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the music's just something I've, I, I put, you know, started 30 years ago and I've never stopped. So they, they just they just sit alongside each other and um, keep me busy. You have so many famous artists that you're working with. And, um, the, well, the first one that I met um, with you. Oh, Lisa Ronson. Oh, Lisa, uh, Lisa Ronson. Yeah, sure. So um, how did you get hooked up with her? I mean, well, did, did you long ago, like, manage David Bowie or, or Mick Ronson or, or something like that? No, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Mick Ronson and, and David Bowie, but um, I live near Lisa's aunt, and she she introduced me to her. I, I mean, Lisa was is an accountant. She's a CPA, and she was working in New York and wanted to come to London for, for work and said, can you give my niece Lisa a job? I said, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So gave Lisa a job. She moved over to London, and I was fortunate enough with um, Paul Cutterford, uh, the guitarist, uh, to, mm-hmm. to make, make an album with Lisa, which... I mean, for me, musically, of all the music I've, I've I've been involved with, is the most satisfying project I've worked on. So that that was 2015. Lisa's Ronson, Emperors of Medieval Japan. Yes, uh, came out. Um, as you know, and you thank thank you very much. I think you played yes some from it at the time. Thank you, and uh, and we met with Lisa, didn't we, when we were over in Tokyo? With did, did we meet when I was over with um, Tony Visconti? I think that's the first time you and I met, or was it with Earl Slick? No, I didn't meet Tony Visconti. I, I I met Bernard Fowler and Earl. Oh Slick. yeah, Bernard Fowler and Earl Slick. Yeah, yeah. 2016. Yeah, Lisa was on that tour as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I played I played the music, like Lisa Ronson's music, but I didn't. It, it hadn't you know sank into me what all this involved with you running counterculture, and counterculture is kind of a. It's a planning company or an agency, and and you just pick people up. Like let's let's do this project together. You make a plan, and you do. Is it that is that how it works? Yeah, it's, that's that's some of how it works, and the rest is just helping creative businesses and and individuals to to improve and manage their business. You know, so someone might say, you know, I, I need to write a business plan, or I need some funding for a project, or. Uh, you know, we're not getting the audiences that we, the, the level of audiences that we want if we're a venue. You know, any 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 kind of business problem in the in the creative sector uh, is what we what we help to solve. So, what gets me about this is, like like I said, you're an entrepreneur. So you you looked at these various businesses and an idea popped into your head. Oh, I think I can do it better, and then I can make, help you guys make more money. Is that how you get clients? You 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 go out and you sell to them, or they come looking for you? Uh, it's, it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of both. I mean, no, normally um, clients have identified issues that they want to resolve, or things that they want to plans that they have that they want to realise, and sometimes they need um, some help in doing it and some advice. And and because we've been around a long time and um, mm-hmm. we're experienced, some, sometimes we can we can bring a bit of external perspective and help people to solve those those issues well i have people in london who, who i would like to introduce you to right and then you're working with darren johnson yeah guy, his name is darren johnson so i gotta tell you a strange story about darren darren johnson is friends of morgan fisher oh yeah who's a great friend of mine yeah morgan's a friend of mine yeah okay <laughs> of course he is yeah that's <laughs> It, and Morgan is playing, um, played with a Mata Hoople, but Jeez. he's now playing with a Japanese artist, and her name is Natsuki. And they're going to have a concert, I think, uh, February 22nd or something like that. When I first found out that she was playing with the key, former keyboardist of Mata Hoople, that just b- blew my mind. I also, so this is getting convoluted. I also made a movie about Yoko Ono. Mm, yeah, I just just finished it, and um, I I got Natsuki to be Yoko in the movie. Oh, wow! And and so all this stuff is just 
like kind of come together and every everyone knows each other. It's it's really strange. So how did you meet Darren Johnson and how Darren Johnson works for a different company? Yeah, he's 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 his own guy, you know, on his own. But Darren was a politician. He was um he was an elected uh, member of the London Assembly, which is the the kind of so what, what, what do you call it? The Parliament for London, uh-huh. um, and he uh, he was the chair of that when Boris Johnson was the mayor. So he's got some he's got some good Boris Johnson stories, but that, that's for another day. But uh, <laughs> uh, so he, he's a reform politician, um, and Darren writes great books about um, glam rock. He's an expert on glam rock, and he do, he does all of the um, uh, the PR press work for the projects that I do. He's a great guy, and Morgan Fisher, um, mm-hmm. really good friend of mine, you know. He played on Lisa Ronson's album uh, *Emperors of Medieval Japan* and co-wrote a couple of the songs. I didn't so like, know that. Yeah, another connect connection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so I guess I got to circle back. So uh, when I played the that Lisa Ronson record, I didn't realize how like the background of this and how this happened. Because had I known, I would have played it more. Okay, okay. I'm totally, I'm totally into supporting like what you're doing and this kind of um, do it yourself. Um, I, I don't even know how to explain do it yourself kind of idea. Like, Hey, let's get together. Let's do this. I've got an idea about this and let's go tour and do whatever. It's kind of um, a, a um, rehabilitation for artists towards the, what I don't want to say twilight of their career, but, towards the end of their career that you give them something to do and it just helps, you know, to further their, uh, what do you call it, legacy? Yeah, absolutely. It's about that. And I think it, it's really important that the spotlight is sometimes put on people who made a massive contribution to making the music we all love, mm-hmm. who, weren't, who weren't the main guys, uh, you know, they, they weren't, they weren't the front men. They weren't necessarily, you know, the, the named artists, but, you know, when they made a significant artistic contribution and they've helped make these wonderful records, it's 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 great to hear from them directly. Yeah. You and Paul Cuddleford, mm-hmm. you are members of Last Day Sect. Yes, that's right. Is yeah. Last Day Sect, is this part of counterculture? Is this like counterculture's uh, that's, a- band? That's, that's, that, that's a band that Paul and I have. We, we've made one album um, and we'll probably make another one at some point but um yeah it's just just a a project title for paul and my music well i saw a video from of last day sect and it's got a girl i think it's flo sabeva oh yeah yeah singing it and she's coming over with tony she's in tony sales band yeah you know that i do five different radio shows wow You're, you're busy aren't you yeah, so I sent you a link to two two of the shows and then the, the other three shows. But um, I can play all the music that you do. Wow, thank you. So I, I do one of the the shows I sent you is um, all Japanese rock, just indies rock. But I also do two other versions of that same show, and one of them is broadcast domestically here in Japan. And that show I play like I'll play Tony Sales on it and more rock and roll type of things but the other show is called color red radio and that's where i play new jazz funk soul whatever as long as it's cool and so when i heard that last day sex song i thought wow this is perfect i'll play this so before i forget don't forget to send me mp3s of those songs and i'll play them I'll I'll play them. Uh, what day is today? Today's there's a, yeah. I'll play them on Monday morning. Thank you, Mike. Thank in you in, in in America and, and um on a very famous radio station. Do you know WFMU? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so, so it's on that station. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally into it, and I'm very interested in bringing brand new music to the to the world. I'm really 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 interested in that. So Paul Cuddleford, he's an old friend of yours. Yeah, I've known him like I don't know, maybe eleven years or something like twelve years, something like that. Um, How did you just you met him one day and you said, "Hey, let's make last day sector sector whatever." Uh, I was introduced to him by um, Tracy Hunter, who's Ian Hunter's daughter. 
you know, Ian Hunt and Mott the Hoople. Really? Uh, his daughter Tracy, <laughs> who I've known for years, introduced me to Paul. And uh, we just we just got on and we, we made so much music since then. Um, we're both really tall, so that, you know, that yeah. helps. So, yeah. so he's, he's someone I can talk to without bending over, and that, that's, uh, you know, that's helpful. <laughs> without bending over? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Looked at that Last Day Sex song, and that has Flo Sab Sabeva singing, and I saw that it only had like 30 views or something. Oh really? Oh no, it, it did a bit better than that. I, I think um well you you we tend to embed our videos in, in the social media and then get more views that way. So YouTube, yeah, YouTube sometimes doesn't get that many views. I, I thought it'd be more than that, but uh Well no. Yeah. I, I thought like, wow, all right, I found I found treasure. I found treasure. So yeah, oh, oh, it's absolutely brilliant. She's from Belgium. Um she she composes film music, she plays keyboards brilliantly, she sings beautifully, she writes great songs. A real talent. Um, and she's a touring member of Heaven 17 now. You know, the British oh. band. Heaven 17. I've heard that band name. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the band that came out of the Human League uh, when they... That's right. Sort of half split up. Um, deep, deep feeling, fascination, something or other like that. Yeah, that's 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 the Human League. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, after, yeah. After so, the split, but... That's amazing. So you you knew Mott the Hoople too? Uh, I've, I've met Ian, but I, I just know Morgan really, you know. Yeah, Morgan's a good friend, and and I've done quite a few different things with him. So, uh, I've got this list of friends. So I'd I'd like to read off a friend's name, Go and then him. you tell me how you met him. Okay. And if he really is a friend or just a drinking buddy. <laughs> how about Ed Sykes? Oh, Ed Sykes. Talk. Ed Sykes is a great friend. Yeah. I'm I'm from Colchester. It's about fifty miles east of London originally. I'm not. I don't live there anymore. But Ed's from there too, so I've known him for a long time. And a great, great friend. Wow. And um, how about Richard Strange? I know Richard very well. I did a, a great friend did a tour in 2019 with Richard singing Lou Reed songs. Wow. So Richard Strange one day wrote me an email out of the blue. I don't didn't even know who he was. And he says, I'm making this record with this Japanese band and I'd like you to play it. So he sent me a couple of songs. And I played it. This band, I just interviewed them like maybe a week ago. Very, oh, okay. very strange band. I think that's got to be Japan's only art band. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, Rich has got a really strong interest in, in art um, and a real cult figure. He's, he's been around so many interesting yeah. things. His career is fascinating. Okay, then and then Kevin Armstrong. Yeah, he, Kevin he was. Did he does he play guitar or what does he play? He plays guitar um, and he's the band leader and he's he's coming over with um, Tony Fox Sales and Clem, um, but he played with Bowie at Live Aid. Um, he played on Absolute Beginners. He played on the first Tim Machine album. Um, wow. He he was on the Iggy Pop album. Blah blah blah. And he, he's had two spells as Iggy Pop's. A uh, lively guitarist and, and band leader. Oh, uh, and I mean, he's played with so many um, artists in, in the eighties and nineties. He's got a very extensive discography. Yeah, Kevin Kevin's a, a very uh, close associate um, mm. and a wonderful mm. guitar player. But you, you, so you, you did her record, and you said she was a certified public accountant, or, or yeah. Yeah. and then and she, she came, came to London to do your record, and well, she came to London to work, and then, and then. You know, we got talking about music and her, Paul Cutterford and I said, let's do a record. So we did that record in 2015. It got great reviews, did very well. Uh, and then Lisa decided, um, and I, I completely understand why, that she didn't want to make music anymore. I mean, but it, it's, it's, if you're going to make one album, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm really proud of the album and I'm, I'm really mm. pleased that she agreed to do it. But it's, it's not a straightforward thing uh, when you have a, a musically successful parent. You know, there are a lot of expectations on you. And I, I completely understand why, you know, Lisa made an album that, of music that's very different from her dad's music and said, oh, that'll do. You know, that that's that's enough for me. And, uh, you know, respect that. But uh, it's a shame in, in, in another way because she's so talented and such a great singer that it'd be nice to see her still doing it. But Yeah, well, 
If you talk to her, tell her that uh, her fans in Japan were asking you, bothering you, like, hey, Tom, you've got to make another record with Lisa. We we want we want to hear it. I'll tell her that. Okay. And then how about Earl Slick? Oh, Slicky. What a, what a legend. I mean, that, that sound on that Station to Station record is incredible. And the tour was great, Mike, wasn't it, that we brought to... Yeah, to it was fantastic. I cried. Yeah, well... Yeah, amazing. I mean, he, he's he's a, you know wonderful man and a great musician. And the work he did with John Lennon as well is is on uh, Double Fantasy and the, and Yoko Ono is is incredible. Um, a really 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 wonderful great guitarist. Um, lots of fun to be with. Big character. Yeah. Uh, I hope to do more with Slicky in the future. Oh, and then how about and finally Bernard Fowler? How about him? Yeah, Bernard, what what a voice! What a strong, powerful voice! Um, yeah, great man. Uh, I mean, he's a friend of Slicky's. That's how I got to meet him. So, when I said to World, "Do you fancy doing a tour?" He said, "Yeah." And I've got I've got the singer, just the singer, uh, and that turned out to be Bernard, who who did it brilliantly. Yeah, I I thought so too, and I I thought that picking Bernard, and I, I know it's going to sound racist, but um, if you had picked a like a white guy to to do. David Bowie, then people would be comparing him. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's the trick. If you've got to, if you're going to revive something or do a whole album yeah. show, you've got to bring something new to it. You can't just, you know, it can't be a a bad version of, you know, a slightly less good version than the original. So uh, the reason we've got we've got a female singer for this Tony Fox Sales tour that we're bringing over next month, February. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Katie Puckrick, and and yeah. again it's the same reason that anyone it's really hard for a guy to compare to Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop's, you know, you, you, you know, he's, he's uncopyable in a, in a mm. way. So uh, having having a woman makes makes those comparisons. Um, you know, it, it, I think I think it works. Yeah, it, it's great. So I'd like to um, um, end part one here, Tom, yep. and then we're going to go to part two and talk about Tony Fox. Uh, Tony Fox sales in Japan and the tour and how you got that all set up and uh, maybe um, cultural anthropology too. We got time. Oh, for well. that. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much to today's guest, Tom Wilcox, music curator, manager, producer, and musician. Wow. This guy does everything and he does it on his own. And that's really something that we should all aspire to. Anyway, thanks Tom. Thank you, Mike.